Okay, ellipses. Ellipses are a lot like circles. Uh, if you just look at them, it looks like it's a stretched circle. And um, so what we're going to do is actually build on what we know about circles and the equations of circles and see if we can construct a reasonable equation for an ellipse and then try it out and see. Okay. Now, uh, we're eventually going to come back later and actually derive it uh, directly from the definition, but let's try this first, all right? Here's the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so the radius is 5, and it's a, a circle centered at the origin. Now, we can put this in a different form if we divide through by the constant here. So if I divide this by 5 squared, I get 1. And I divide each of these by 5 squared, and I get uh, something that looks like this. And notice since top and bottom are both squared, I could write it like this a little bit more conveniently. Either one of these is adequate. Okay. So it looks like x divided by the radius squared plus y divided by the radius squared equals 1. Describes a circle whose radius is 5, centered at the origin. Okay. But what if we want to stretch the circle? Now that we have the radius sort of split up into how it affects x and how it affects y, what if we change it? So here's x over 5 squared, and here's y over 4 squared. It sort of looks reasonable that this might um, uh, make the y radius different than the x radius, which is sort of what we want to do when we get an ellipse. Here's another possibility, okay? Let's look at these with Graphmatica. Okay, let's first of all uh, plot our um, circle. So if I take x, let's see, parenthesis, uh, x divided by 5, and then square it, plus parenthesis y divided by 5. squared equals 1. Okay, in fact, let's zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing. All right, so circle centered the origin, radius of 5. Okay, let's start playing with it. What if I change this 5 to a 4? Okay, notice that I changed the y version of the radius to 4, and so in the y direction it's now 4, the x direction is still 5. So it looks like we can actually play with this and specify uh, what the x and y radii are, to, radii are to be. Let's put this one at 3 and this one at 7. Okay. Let's see, we're predicting that it's going to be 3 wide and 7 high. And there we go. So the x radius looks like it's 3, and the y radius is 7, just like we expected. Okay, So it looks like we have a way of specifying an ellipse. Okay, let's take the equation of an ellipse centered at the origin like this. And all we've done is taken the equation of a circle and allowed the two r's to be different here. Okay, And let's see that this makes sense as far as plotting the ellipse. So let's, on this graph, just say that uh, here's the, the r sub x, and let's say that this is going to be the r sub y. And let's see that um, the ellipse will take on the shape and so forth that we expect it to here. So first of all, let's let x equal the x radius. So x is going to be out this far. Okay. And let's rewrite this over here. So if x is equal to r sub x, we have r sub x over r sub x. I'm doing this in sort of general form. And then we have y over r sub y equals 1. But this whole thing is equal to 1. And if I subtract 1 on both sides, then we get this term equals 0. And then multiply through by r sub y, and y is equal to 0. So we see that when x equals r sub x, y is equal to 0. And when x is minus r sub x, it's also equal to 0, because this would come out minus 1. When you square it, it's still 1. The 1's cancel, and so y is 0 again. 
So if I go R, or if I go negative R, Y is zero. So it is, in fact, going to hit these two points. Same reasoning can apply here uh, in the case of the Y direction. What if Y is equal to R sub Y? Then this equals 1, and the whole thing equals 1. Ones cancel, I get a 0 here. This then equals 0. Then x equals 0, because I multiply through and so forth. x equals 0. So we have a, a y-intercept, in other words, when um, y is equal to r sub y. What if y is the negative of r sub y? What if y is down here? Okay. Notice that when y is the negative of r sub y, this becomes minus 1. And when we square it, it's 1. Same reasoning all over again. And so the other point that it hits is here. So we can see that the ellipse has to fit the way we expect it to. Okay, let's look at this um, geometer sketch pad demonstration. What we're going to do is take a ray here that starts at the center, and we're going to sweep it around. And notice that this ray cuts through two different circles. And I'm going to call this one the x circle, or, and so this radius is r sub x, or rx, because I didn't have any subscript notation here. And this circle has radius ry or r sub y, okay? And so if I take this ray where it cuts through the two circles, what I'm going to do is have a point here that has the same x value as this point on the x circle. So this is a vertical line here. So this point and this point are at the same value of x, or the same distance to the right from the origin. Okay. And notice this horizontal line makes it so that this point and this point have the same y value. So this point here is getting its x's from this circle, and it's getting its y's from this circle. And so now as we move it, notice that it hits the blue circle when you get up to here, because it has the same y value as the blue circle. And down here, it hits the, the pink circle, or whatever color that is, okay? And as we continue around, what we get is an ellipse that is basically a blend of these two circles, okay? So, let's uh, take this off. Notice this uh, light line here is a trace of the entire ellipse. And as we animate it here, we can see that it's actually going to trace out that ellipse. Okay. This was a fun little construction with Geometer's sketch pad. Okay. So you can see how you can trace out an ellipse like that. All right. Now, what if we change these values. Like, what if I make this smaller than the other? Now we have an ellipse that looks vertical because r sub x is smaller than r sub y. Let's um, animate it again. Okay. So still, uh, the point that's tracing this out is getting its x values from the x circle and it's getting its y values from the y circle. And so, uh, whatever the two radii are for those two circles determine the <clears throat> these two parameters for the ellipse. Okay. Okay, what if we want the general equation for an ellipse? Uh, these are still horizontal or vertically oriented, but it's not rotated at weird angles still. Okay. But if we have ellipses that are parallel to the x and y axes, at least. And um, here's the equation for the ellipse at the origin. And what do we do in order to shift this away from the origin? And the answer is we're going to do the same thing for ellipses that we did with parabolas earlier on and with circles um, just recently. What we're going to do is if we want to have the center of the ellipse at a point that's labeled HK, we're going to use the we're going to substitute x minus h in place of x and y minus k in place of y. So instead of x, we put x minus h. Instead of y, we put y minus k. All right? 
it's a straightforward substitution. So now we have ellipses in this form. Okay, let's see what these look like. Okay, let's start with an ellipse centered at the origin. And notice the x radius is 5 and the y radius is 4. And we have that up here. So it's x over 5 squared plus y over 4 squared. And let's just choose where we want to put this. Let's say we want to shove this over here so it's uh, centered at 6 and 3. Okay, so I want this to be the center point. Okay, so in the x direction I want to go to the right 6. Okay, so I'm going to put x minus 6. Uh, and I'll need parentheses again because that numerator, I want it not to have order of operations issues. And then for the y, in place of y, I'm going to have y minus 3. Okay. All right, we have an identical ellipse, and notice it's centered here at the point 6, 3, just as we predicted. What if I want it to be over 6 and down 3? I would just change it from a minus 3 to a plus 3, because that would be minus a minus in the y direction. And there you have it. There you are. So you can basically uh, take the equation of pretty much any shape, in fact any shape, you can take the equation of anything uh, and you can move it to the right or left by, uh, sub by substituting x minus h in place of x. You can move it vertically by substituting y minus k in place of y. Uh, 